Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, we're going to learn a little cheeky hack to create guides in Adobe XD. Now I did do a video on this before. I'm gonna kind of update this because there's been some new tools and features added. And I, I quite honestly just feel like I could, I could do a better job of explaining this. Um, but you don't have guides in XD in the traditional sense, like Photoshop, Illustrator, drag out from the rulers and all that good stuff. But there are ways now that you can add guides into XD, use them effectively with very few of the drawbacks to doing it in the non-native way. So I'm going to show you that now. Let's jump to the screen. And you can see I've got an artboard here, an iPhone XS or 10 or XS, whatever you call it. And we're going to do this using the line tool. But first, we're going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm just going to decide what kind of guides I would like. So for example, if I wanted a 30 pixel margin all the way around the edge, I would create a square by clicking and holding shift and I would set that to 30 by 30. You can see the width and the height over here in the property inspector. And let's deselect border and just give this a really bright funky color so we can see that this is our square. This is like a temporary guide that we're using. And you can also click and hold alt and it will create a copy of any object that you select in XD. So we'll pop that in the bottom left corner and then I'll hold Alt and click and then we'll throw one right in the middle. And I could manually align it or I can just use the alignment tools up here just to center that vertically and horizontally in the middle. So we've got our guides or our first set of guides, our red square guides. Let's select the line tool and just left click and hold Shift to draw a straight line. And if I click on the border color picker, we'll just hover over the middle part of the hue, drag to the top right in the color picker, and we've got a good old, good old cyan guide. And you can of course pick a different color if you like. And what we need to do now is make this the same height as the artboard. So the artboard I'm working on is the iPhone 10 XS, which is 812 pixels. And we can manually drag this so it snaps to the top edge, or we can use the alignment tools. And then we'll just drag this over and it will snap to our red squares. So remember I could hold down Alt again and drag, and you can see it wants to go up into the air there. If I hold down Shift as well as Alt, it will keep that straight, whether it's horizontally or vertically. And then what I can do again, hold Alt Shift, click and drag, so I'm doing this over the course of a couple of minutes to demonstrate it, but it's incredibly quick to do this when you're actually doing it and not doing a tutorial. So what I'm gonna do now is, well, let's just take a copy of this, or we could just make a brand new line for the horizontal one. We'll set the width to the width of the art ball, which is 375. We'll zoom in nice and close and just use the eyedropper tool to sample that same cyan color and then we use the alignment tools to center that. So it becomes incredibly quick using things like the eyedropper tool and the alignment tools just to line everything up. So you can see here, I'm just gonna finish this off really quick. There we go, da, 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 da. all done. And then I can just delete the red squares. So there we go, guides done very quickly, but that's not all. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna drag over all of these lines and then go to the asset panel in the bottom left corner, whip this out, and then click on the plus sign next to symbols. And it will add this as a symbol. So a symbol is an asset that you can copy and repeat throughout an entire document. And then if you make any changes to one instance of that symbol, it updates across every single other instance. So if I double click on this, and I'll call this guides symbol. So you can see it turns green now. And if I were to duplicate this artboard, any changes I make, whether it's position or color, is updated across every instance of it. So let's just undo that a moment. So I'm gonna call this Master Guides. So similar to kind of how InDesign works, you have your master template, and then you put a bunch of stuff on the master template and that affects all of the other pages, or in this case, artboards in your document. So it's a little bit different, but I'll show you what I mean. So we've got the master here, we've got our symbol. If I go to the layers panel, panel, 
go to the go to the layers panel you can see it's listed here as a single object. We can double click on this, both here and on the artboard. We can go inside and we can change these individually, but we'll leave that as it is. But I am going to lock this. I don't want to accidentally move these guides at any point, and I can hide or show them using the eyeball icon here. So you can lock them, you can switch them on and off really, really easily. I've created my master guides, so I can select this now and press Command or Control D on the keyboard. Uh, depending on whether you're on a Mac or a PC, and Command or Control D duplicates the selected object. So we'll go Artboard. So this is gonna be my app. This app could have like 50 or 100 screens, so you obviously don't want to update your guides across all of those if you make any changes. So now I'm just gonna duplicate this Artboard. This is my app, uh, it's gonna be fantastic. And you can see it's now got all of these guides. If I click on them, they're locked by default. And as I start creating, my app, I know, I know this app is pretty marvelous. All these circles, so this is my app. Just make sure that this is on top of everything, the guides if you want to see them, but you can of course lock. And if that disappears or anything, just go up to object, down to lock. There we go. And hide, those icons seem to disappear then for a second. So you can turn them on or off. XD, what are you doing to me? Okay, if the icons disappear or anything like that happens, just go to the object menu at the top or just right click, show, hide, unlock, lock, whatever. You can see the guides and you can unlock them if you need to. So if I wanted to make some changes to my guides, let's say uh, I want the gutter in the middle to be wider and the margin around the edge to be a bit thinner. What I can do is just unlock this on my master artboard Double click to go inside the symbol, make the changes. And you can see, obviously I'm making these very, very quickly. And there you go. You can see all of those changes are updated across every single artboard. And if you do click on any layers and uh, any of the icons or anything doesn't show up for whatever reason, just remember whether you're on a Mac or a PC, you can go to the top on a Mac and you've got a lot of these options here or on a PC, you can right click and obviously I only get one option here on Mac, but on PC you right click and then you get a bunch of other options as well. So I know XD at the moment does have the ability to add layout grids or square grids. And these are all really, really cool and very useful in their own way. And there's even a plugin called Guide Guide that you can try out uh, for free. But if you like doing it manually and you like setting up all your guides or your lines, guides, yourself. Um, this is one way of doing it. It's a bit of a hack, but actually it doesn't have that many drawbacks that I've found from using it. So uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Guys, if you've got any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop them down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time. You're a rebel, getting into trouble. You are kind of like a fire, like a fire, like a